Welcome to the Your Message Received podcast. And now, taking your message to the finish line, your host, John Duffin. Hey folks, John Duffin here from Duffin Media. Welcome back to another episode of Your Message Received. Your Message Received is the home, the place, the platform for you to help you find your best, most true, authentic business voice. Hell, your most authentic voice. Get what you want, find what you need, improve your results, make billions of dollars, find the person in your dreams. Can't guarantee those last two. We're working on those. But the other ones I feel pretty good about. And I love the fact you keep coming back to us, whether it's on YouTube to watch us or listen to us on Spotify, iHeartMedia, all your favorite places where you get your podcasts. And the way that we deliver that message, folks, is because we bring people on who walk the walk. And that's how I get to look, my whole mission. If I can get somebody to the finish line faster, being authentic and true without banging their head as often as I have or taking as long as I have, then I feel like I'm doing the right thing. How do I do it? I bring way cool people on. And I got somebody right now that I get to say hi to. Uh, Folks, I am such a big fan of my next guest. Father Judge Grad, if you are a Philly guy and if you're a Northeast Philly guy like me, all those bells and whistles go. Uh, a Philadelphia native, a real estate mogul, part of the world famous DeChico brothers, <laughs> <laughs> and all around good guy, Anthony DeChico. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much, John. Pleasure to be here. Excited. It's just great to have you. Like, I, I, I met, so to speak, uh, I met Anthony on, like, so one of the good parts I will say of a lot of not good parts of having COVID in our lives was a lot of zoom Facebook live programs were taking place. So I'm not saying that like, thank God for COVID, but what I'm saying is I don't know Anthony DeChico and I should, I'll get to the Northeast Philly part. I damn well should, but the fact is didn't until Anthony was on a Facebook live program with my current partner, Chad Levine. Um, and I, yeah. and I watched you roll. And one of the very first things I'd want to ask you, man, is this, like I said, it, it's, you've got such a calm demeanor growing up in a family and all that stuff. Is that, has that always been you? Yeah. I mean, look, um, I was more the silent killer, <laughs> You know, I love that. <laughs> you know, I was, and I, yeah, and I was, I'm assuming we mean we mean figuratively, right? right. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't go that yeah. deep on the show, but you're you're yeah. fine. Um, I have more. I have more of my father's um, personality. Like he was very calm and cool. Mm-hmm. You know, but look, when when we get upset, it's like mm-hmm. the end of the world comes. You know, that's it, like everything blows up. So, you know, I was more like calm, cool, try to get along with everybody. And then, you know, sometimes things didn't go the way it should have. And here we are. We, we get into a uh, nuclear bomb <laughs> happening. So it's the Italian in me, you know, John? <laughs> that's that's a good thing, but I think by and large. I not, I think I'm pretty confident. But God almighty, this has got to be, oh, 40 years ago at least, which is scary to me. Um, I think I met your dad. I know I didn't meet you because the timeline doesn't work. You would have been about six years old or two but um it, it, it's at the auto dealership in northeast philadelphia so when i was sniffing around looking to get my first car and i don't know that anybody was really excited when i got my driver's license I don't think anybody. yeah me too no. <laughs> nobody was celebrating but the fact is i live in the northeast and i don't remember your dad that well i just have heard incredible things yeah. about talk to me about your dad Listen, um, you know, taught me and my brother, I mean, pretty much everything that we know, you know, born in, in Italy, then they, they uh, ventured to Argentina and then came to America and, you know, started a business. And, and that's the main thing he, he taught us was to was to just how to maintain a business. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people have family businesses, but remember, not everybody can make them go the way they were going when they were brand by by their their family. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad passed away in 2016. So me and my brother and my father have been a partnership for, man, I mean, I would remember going there. I used to sell pretzels on the corner of Frankfurt and Sheffield when I was five years old, you know? So you weren't allowed just to, so in my household, you weren't allowed just to sit home and do nothing. You had to have something going on, a job, some type of 
something sports, you know, and my thing was the work. I loved working. We used to go to the car lot on the weekends or on Saturdays with him. And, uh, you know, we'd get our little Dunkin' Donuts and then I would wash a car or two, or, you know, my brother would buff a car and we kind of just, that's how we kind of learned from that point on by going with him. So nobody was allowed to do nothing. How old were you when you decided at this point that you're going to grab your Dunkin' Donuts and show up at the car wash? About how old was it when you started? Man, I, I tell you, I was going there since I was five selling pretzels. I would say summers, I would start going there to do, to, to like detail cars. Okay. So it was more summertime job, you know, getting there and uh, learning how to buff. Like, for instance, my uncle Chris would be the one who would buff and then it would go to the next, well, it would, yeah, then we'll go to the next bay and I would be the the interior guy. I would, you know, clean all the windows, all the dashboards, all the vacuuming and shampooing the rugs. And, you know, and I kind of like doing it, you know, that was just the learning, the learning curves to getting into that car business. I think that's such a cool feeling. By the way, folks, if you're listening from Philadelphia, then maybe you could relate to the fact that you talk about selling pretzels on the corner and I'm telling you, I can taste them. I can literally taste Nothing them. Nothing like it. Nothing and they're like not, it. And I'm, I'm, I'm such a big fan. I, I'm not, I don't want to sound like some typical old man. Oh, back then the pretzels were, I don't want to do that. Right. But no joke. It was like, they were great. Listen, these are ones from the bakery too. So they were freshly baked. They were, they were just, listen, they were, they were fantastic. They were definitely good. <laughs> You know, and it's, we did listen. That's, and that's the thing too. That's one thing my dad taught me as well. Yeah. I was on the corner selling pretzels for six, seven hours. Right. Right. But when I, when I made $27 or $30, whatever it was, my dad goes, okay, hand me my, uh, my, my 12, my $13 for the pretzels. I'm like, you saw me literally jump back. I was the one here. He goes, okay. He goes, no problem. He goes, so basically what you want is you want the material cost and the labor cost. He goes, that, that, would, that would be like me going to business, selling a car and giving it away for free. So how old are you when you're getting this lesson? I'm like seven, like seven eight years old. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> is that why they invented child labor laws? Because I feel like or in my, that's listen, a great lesson, man. In the, in the Italian household, there's no, there's no labor law. <laughs> get your ass to work. Right? That's what it was. Get to work. The, the Irish households are pretty damn similar. Uh, I was going to say, I, I can only speak to that from my side. So I was a slack. I didn't start till I was 13. So I was a, a complete deadbeat. So that was my first job. So you're yeah. light years ahead of me, man. Sure. So you, so to Chico Auto, which was literally blocks from where I grew up, was there for God almighty. It feels like forever, you know, 80, um, wait a minute, 81, I believe. I think that's when they, well, originally my father was down the street at Welsh in Frankfurt. Right. As, a, as he owned the TV uh, store repair shop. And then he started selling cars out of the back of that place. And then eventually him, my uncle Mario, my uncle Tony and my grandfather, they bought a place where, which is now a Wawa parking lot. They bought that place. And, um, that's where it all started. That's where it's where everybody started to get their feel of the business. So you're getting your field of business and all. is, uh, I mean, you just described it so well in regards to like, like literally a business model. When did you first start thinking you were going to do anything business wise, or did you just figure you were going to work for the family and, and you know, my thing was because we were taught so young to work and, and to make a dollar. I mean, yeah. you know, started going there and detailing cars. Like I liked doing that because you would get these old cars. My dad would buy from like a trade in down in, in um, you know, wherever his stop was, bring it back. And it was just a dirty pig. Right. <laughs> so then when you buff it and you make this car shine, like it's like it was brand new again, like you start to get like, wow, this is awesome. And then the car sells within two or three days after the fact. So like, this is a pretty cool, uh, concept here and you know and then starting to talk to and interact with with uh with consumers you know i always knew what i was selling that's mm -hmm. the main thing mm -hmm. and i actually tell people that today when i mentor them in real estate always know what you're selling because if you don't know what you're selling that really you don't really know what you're doing in my eyes anyway you have to know your product and that's the main thing i mean it's it's very important that was very important to me to know what motor how many horsepower did it have power windows power locks you know everything about the vehicle did it matter to you in learning about products, whether it was back then or even now, did it matter to you that you had to be passionate about it? Or was that just the business acumen of whatever I'm well, doing? I need I mean, to look, do. anything you do, you got to, for, for me, when I'm in on something, I'm a hundred percent in 
There's no half ass. Mm -hmm. There's no 50%. There's no none of that stuff. It's mm -hmm. I'm a hundred percent in and I'm focused. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if the more you focus and the more you want it, it's going to happen. You're going to make yourself be, you're, you're going to kill it. You're going to, you're going to just continue to grow and grow and grow. And I felt like that was the thing. Like it was like a, you know, just getting that, like when you were texting, like before they really didn't have text messages back in the nineties, right? Right. Or they did, or they didn't really exist like today, but just getting that client in is just, mm -hmm. that was a job in itself. Mm -hmm. You know, remember they're not, they're not just shopping with you. They're shopping with nine or 10 other dealerships. Yep. It's all about who's going to give See, me the I forget best. That. I literally forget that part. And so you talked to me before the show and I love this in regards to the techniques and things that you learn from the automotive business in regards to, as you said, you've got people that are going to nine or 10 different dealerships at the time. Mm -hmm. What would be an Anthony DiCicco technique um, in regards to communications that you have found that has- I, Listen, I don't ask many, the thing is, you don't want to ask the consumer a lot of questions because when you do, they don't know who you are. So how can they trust you? They, you know, you're asking questions, personal questions. What's your credit score? What's this? What's right? I didn't do any of that. Which it was- it was more or less, hey, here's the car. This is, we can help you out. Come test drive it at least. You know, it's it's free of charge to come in and test drive. It doesn't mean you have to buy the vehicle. Just to get them into to your dealership. Mm -hmm. Once they're there and they fall in love with the car, right? They're going to love this Mercedes that they're, whatever they're test driving, right? And then you start asking the questions, right? And that, listen, and it was it's a lot harder in the car business than it is in the real estate world. And, I, and I'll get into that. Yeah, definitely. Because at the end of the day, you know, everybody has, some people have questionable credit. They don't know what their credit score is. They don't know that you need to make a certain amount to get to a $40,000 vehicle in payment. Right. You know, the banks make the final decision on, on when we submit them to the, to the banks. You know, so you might work for three or four days to get them into the dealership, let them go on a test drive, come to find out that you can't, they can't buy that car right now. We have to switch them to a lot of a, a less expensive vehicle. And you know how hard it is to switch somebody from a Mercedes to a Chevy Impala? <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's not an easy thing to do, no. but you know what? It's a stepping. And I always told him, listen, it's a stepping stone. I know it's not the car you want. It's still a nice car. It's still transportation. Two years you trade it in and you get the Mercedes Benz, you know? So that was that for the car business. Yeah. Really is a totally different animal because they're coming to you with the pre-approval. They're coming to you with the money. You just mm -hmm. got to find them the, the, the product, right? They're already, they're already approved. So when I first learned this scenario, Right, three and a half years ago. Right, I'm like, my goodness, this is this is it. Yeah. I had to work my my ass off to get someone <laughs> just to run their credit and hope they would get approved. They're approved already. They're coming to me with the money. Here's the money. Now go find me the house. <laughs> so, folks, a couple big things to note as well. Too one of the things that I find so impressive. So I only know Anthony DeChico via real estate. That's it. That's all I know. And 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 there's a reason for that because he's incredibly good at it. Not to mention, as I said, we are timing this out beautifully because we get to not announce it, but it's one of the uh, bunches of people that get to share the fact that Anthony DeChico is part of a stellar team at Keller Williams Doylestown New Hope. And so I don't know any of this backstory. I just find it interesting to me because growing up, like I feel like you take pieces of things, whether you intended to or not. I, I like I just from my own experience, I don't tell anybody what to do. But I mean, from my own experience, I've come to realize there's things that I do. There's techniques that I've had that have nothing to do with broadcast ad sales or running a voiceover company or or messing around with real estate. And that's why I find it fascinating in terms of your background and growing up, because I always feel like people take pieces and it's always good. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it, it's always good. So Listen, you, I, I love the car business. When I was in the car right. business, I loved it. You know, at the end of the day, I just, I was involved with a lot of stuff. And then, you know, my brother bought all the vehicles. Mm -hmm. so he would spend Monday nights, Wednesdays mm -hmm. in, in New Jersey, Thursdays in, in Bel Air, Maryland, Fridays up in Manhattan, Pennsylvania, getting cars so we can get them in, recon them, get them ready for sale, get them on the lot. I was the finance manager. I was a salesman. I, I we handled uh, the, the service department. I mean, we had a, two shops going and we were selling a hundred cars a month at one point. I mean, we were, we were really rocking and rolling out of this place. And we, mm -hmm. we definitely learned how to maintain a business at, during that whole period of, of the, you know, the time we were there. And I wanted to ask, by the way, I'm also nuts about Anthony's brother, Emilio, and as I said, he's hard not to love. And so, as I said, I'm, I'm just a big fan of the family. 
and the work ethic and the talent. So one of the things I think about though, is when you made the switch, I first off didn't know that you were only full-time in real estate since 2019, which I, I, I just find unbelievable in regards to what you have pulled off since that point. But my question would be, how long did it take for you in your mind to have people identify you as Anthony DeChico, real estate pro, Anthony DeChico, rather than the car guy? Was there a transition? Did you have a difficult time? Or was it just a matter of you knew what you were doing and everything worked? You know, I've been in, I had my real estate license and I've been in real estate since 2009, I believe. Okay, so right. I was, the main reason why, well, two reasons why I got my license was, first of all, if I was watching when Million Dollar Listing came out in California or yeah. LA, where it was, yeah. and I'm watching this show and I'm, and I'm my wife, I'm just, I'm like, I can't believe this guy's making this kind of commission. This is crazy. I can do this. This is me. I, I'm hundred percent. Cause I like the glitz and the glamour. And I like to dress and you know, all that, you know, the, the, all the nonsense. So I was like, you know what? I told my wife, I'm going to get my real estate license. She goes, are you nuts? You're crazy. And I'm like, I'm going to get it. So I got it. And I, at the time, my brother started out, he was doing a lot of contracting work, mm -hmm. a lot of renovation stuff. So then I get into it. Now I'm doing it. I'm doing it because now I don't have to, I can save on the commissions of, of when I sell the property, right? I don't have to pay myself, obviously, because I'm, I'm the owner. Mm -hmm. So in my first year, I started out with Caldwell Banker Harside, met an amazing woman, Joanne Wenling, which was who was my first broker who hired okay. me. She's, a, she's just an amazing mentor. I still talk to her today. She's just a great person. I can always go to her for anything, and she always gives me, gives me the right advice. So she hired me. I was there for probably almost 10 years, I would say. Mm -hmm. And in the first year, I did a lot of short sale stuff. You know, I learned that's one of the hardest things in, in wow. real estate to learn that. Yeah. I did a lot. I probably did like 10 or 12 my first year. And it was, you know, learning that process was, was amazing. It's totally different today than it was back then. I think it was a little bit easier back then. That's some gutsy moves though, man. You know, uh, so then eventually I, I went to, I went to better homes mm -hmm. and we were in the car business. Look, we sold our car business on Frankfurt Avenue in 2018. Things were just right. getting nuts. My yeah. father passed away in 2016. Yeah. You know, me and my brother, like, look, we live in Bucks County. Let's mm -hmm. move to Bucks County. Right. So we found this big 10,000 or 12,000 square foot warehouse in Ben Salem, and we figured to do only internet sales, okay. which started to work out great. Right. Well, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't what we thought. And yeah. at the end, I told my brother, I said, listen, I'm going to, let's just forget the rules. They're the, the cars, the car business at this point. It's not really helping our situation. Yeah. You know, we'll sell it final once and for all. And I'm going to go to, to real estate full time. This is uh, 2019, summer of 19. So I was with Better Homes um, at the time, Joanne Wenling, who my broker was, she went there and uh, Mike Cirillo was the uh, the agent, the, the owner there. So yeah. I was with Mike for a little bit. And then I said to myself, if I'm going to go full time, I mm -hmm. want to go with somebody who is known in the industry, who sells high dollar uh, um, houses. Mm -hmm. And I known this person for 20 years. He actually, he was my real estate agent when I brought, bought my first house in 2003. Who? Joseph Joseph Bograd. Okay. Joe's a friend for 20 years. Got it. And um, you know, I called Joe and I said, you know, let's let's have a conversation. He says, absolutely. So we met. And uh that was it. That was that was once we had the conversation, I knew it was the right fit. And uh I was part of the Bograd team. 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. So that's that's a long period of time, man. Um yeah. what would you say? from that 20 year stretch, I never like picking one thing is just doesn't work. But what would you say were some of the more memorable, like in good ways, things that, that happened to you or for you or whatever the case may be, you know, um, it's, I would, you, you achieved some significant success. And I know you already alluded to it for God's sake. Um, yeah. I mean, look, I'd be honest one of the best dressed people I know. <laughs> and, <laughs> You know, but listen, I, I looked at Joe and I, and I, 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 um, I watched what he did. I and mean, you know, at the end of the day, he does great business. He sells a lot of houses and I wanted to get to that level. And I was always told, well, you're not going to get to that level this quickly because Joe's been doing it 20 years. You've been right. full time for not even your, your yeah. first year full time. How do you think you're going to get there? You know, and, and when you tell me something like that, mm -hmm. actually one of the team members is the one who said that to me at the time. You can, and, uh, you can, I, you'll you never, can. you're not going to get to that, le that level. And I'm like, all right, well, then I'll take the challenge, you know? So, you do? so 
first year, you know, I, I uh, got on with Zillow. Mm -hmm. I'm a big Zillow guy and I know a lot of agents don't like Zillow, but mm -hmm. it all comes down to how, you know, I close a lot of Zillow leads. And okay. again, I was telling you the transition. So it's almost like having the car business, but having cars.com or, or having a auto trader.com. Oh, right. Right. You get a lead in and you're following, yeah. you're just trying to connect with the lead. Yeah. This is where I tell you, they call you with the, the money already with the pre-approval. Mm -hmm. So my first year I, um, and, and it sucked because it was COVID year. Oh, you know, right. So I, so we and were shut down. Breaking. It was just breaking. So we um, were insane, yeah. right? You know, we weren't we weren't allowed to work, and then we were trying to sneak to work, and you know, <laughs> other agents were telling on you, and we had to watch what we were doing. It was a big mess. Yeah. You know, but I managed that year on a COVID year. I managed somehow, some way, to do fifteen million dollars in sales with my first full time year. I find so, that staggering. I mean, look, I thought it was. I mean, to me, fifteen million doesn't sound like a lot of money when you when you look at Joe. Who probably does 50 60 million dollars you know so this is your one you're told you can't do it i sold anthony i sold one home and i remember wearing hazmat outfits and, and all that stuff i think i had six pairs of gloves on yep. when we were handing stuff over and i remember thinking i ain't doing this um <laughs> yep. and you still pulled 15 million out in spite of what was the most difficult selling circumstances. Yep, and, and I think at that point too, I showed Joe that I was being serious. I was, yeah. I, I meant that I was not playing games. That I wasn't there just for the for the to be on the team. I wanted to sell mm -hmm. real estate and get my name right. out there. Right. So Joe put me on the billboard at that point mm -hmm. uh, on ninety five, which was a to me was a big uh, was a big thing for me. No. You know, it's 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 face recognition. It's it's people. How many people drive by on ninety five? They see your face out there. You know. So at the end of the day, that was a very exciting thing. So now. Remember, January 1st, it's reset time, yeah. right? Now it's reset time. 2021, January 1st, now we got to go balls to the wall. Yep. I think that year alone, I did 105 transactions for $38 million or something like that. You know, so that was a big year. I mean, that was a crazy year. That was, you know, that's when all the nonsense started with the escalation clauses and the multiple offers. And, you know, you we were waiting in line for an open house around the corner because they were only letting in so many people at the time because of the code rules. Oh, they, you would have thought they were selling Taylor Swift tickets. The yeah, fact right. is, so, but what I would ask is, did you do anything differently or was it just full on, I'm going? You know, you always hear everybody say, you know, you need to have a buyer broker agency sign. You need to have a pre-approval in hand. You need to have this, 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 and this. And I'm like, no, because I know from the car business, you start asking right. questions. They're like, they, they, they ghost you. Like you said, right? Yep. They're like, why is this guy asking me about my credit score? He's, you know, I, I don't, I'm, that's personal information to me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, when I get a Zillow call, I'm like, how are you doing? This is Anthony DeChico from, at the time, Remax Elite. Yeah. You know, you're looking at this property on so, so, so. What day and time do you want to see it? Well, I can see it tomorrow at four o'clock. No problem. I'm going to make that, that connection or that, that appointment. Give me two minutes. I'm going to hang up. I'm going to send you my personal contact. This way we can we can uh, interact with each other and kind of, um, you know, if you have any questions, you have any other properties, you can text them to me. Mm -hmm. I make the uh, the appointment. I text them. Thank you for for uh, for your conversation. We are confirmed tomorrow at four o'clock. I will meet you at the property. Done. No. Do you have a pre-approval? Are you cash? None of that stuff. I meet them there. Now, I remember, I'm in the uh, contracting business for a long time. Right. So my... I, me and my brother, what we do differently is we bring that business into our real estate business with our consumers, with our clients, mm -hmm. because it, I feel that I'm not there just to sell a house. We're not on house hunters. And I tell them this, we're not on house hunters on HGTV. It's not three houses or, and, and you got to pick one. Mm -hmm. You know, I still have clients from 2020 that I'm showing houses. So that's almost four years ago. Okay. Because I let them know this house is not right. This house has bad windows, bad roofing. And if you're only putting down five, 10%, you're not going it, to, it's, it's, it's a big expense to buy a house at 50,000 or 20,000 over asking, and then expense another 30, 40,000 for roofing and air conditioning and windows. So I let the, I let every buyer know my opinion, which I know you're not supposed to do, hey, but right. you're not supposed to give opinion. You're not, oh. you know, but I'm a licensed insured and bonded contractor for real. I build new, new construction from the ground up. My brother does too. So I just go around the house and I just basically show them that there's, you know, if there's been mold, if there's any leaking, if there was a, uh, you know, the basement was, mm -hmm. was flooded. And I go back to the seller's disclosure to make sure these things are on the seller's disclosure, just to see if there's, if anybody even, you know, knew about it. 
So I interact that business with my real estate business. And I feel that that helps a client trust me more because I'm not there just to sell them and make a commission. I'm there to really protect their best interest. Okay. So that's I, the thing. I think that's a huge thing. Not to mention, I've seen enough of the videos and what your brother does in regards to like the contracting, not to mention he's a bona fide real estate agent, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say the way that you've woven that in, like they talk about full service. I don't know that I've ever seen a full service that's that kind of full service. For sure. And it's not like we're giving an opinion on what's wrong. We're actually licensed contractors, you know? So the other thing we do is that, and I was telling I touched on this a little bit, is know what you're selling, right? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't go to showings with papers in my hands or my phone on. Mm -hmm. I study the listing before I show up. Now, if I have 14 showings that day, you better believe I'm going on bright on my, on my phone and, I, and I'm studying 14 different listings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if they have questions, when was the house built? I don't want to look at my phone or the paper. And what, what, are the, what are the real estate taxes here? I don't want to look at my phone or the paper. I want to know. As soon as you ask me the question, it's uh, it's 6900 a year. That includes school tax too. What's the HOA fee? 240 a year. That includes this, 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 and this, right? You know what you're selling. It shows you that you're, you, you're not like just there just to show them a house. And I witness this plenty of times. When I go to showing sometimes, I will see an agent, no lie, sitting in the kitchen while their buyer is just roaming around the house. And then they hear me talk about, no, these windows are no good. Uh, this this bathroom's no, like they hear me say this and I hear them go downstairs to their buyer. I mean, to their agent. Hey, well, I heard the other agent upstairs say that the windows are no good. Oh, I'm not a licensed contractor. I, I don't know. You know, you have to go, you, a home inspection will pick that up. Not me. What, what do we need you for? What do they need you for? Seriously. What do they need you for? Just to open the door? Any any dummy can do that. <laughs> open the door. You, you got to be there. I Listen, when I walk through a house. Anthony, bringing the bottled water, I think, is a real skill. And I right. think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you know, needing to read the papers out. <laughs> it's... I love this. I lo But you know what, too? I think it speaks to your heart and passion more so. Not more so. As much as your business acumen. Because I think, like, I'll speak for me. I don't use notes ever mm -hmm. when I am having communications, conversations, podcast conversations, ever, ever. However, mm -hmm. and I ain't telling you that to pat myself on the back. What I'm saying is when I was having, and I don't have that many real estate conversations, I've done at least half the things that you were like laughing about with the other real, I've done at least half of them and maybe three quarters of them. And I think a part of it comes down to, it's not just taking you seriously. It's just, it's, it's easier to build a relationship with somebody if they're actually talking to you. Listen, and I, you know, you're hitting it because here's the thing. When I do open houses, right. and I mentor, I mentor other agents and I bring them with me mm -hmm. so they can see the interaction. Right. The interaction with is not just talking about the house. I talk about my my kids. I talk about my wife. Yeah. I talk about just yeah. I just have a general conversation with with everybody who walks in the door. And you know how many times people would call me and say, Anthony, mm -hmm. would you mind being my agent? Because the mind? agent I was with <laughs> now mm -hmm. is not was not as knowledgeable as you are. And right. I said, Well, here's the here's the thing. I can't step on anybody's no, 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 no. We already we already parted ways. Mm -hmm. And I said, Did you sign? I said, Okay. So because of the interaction and because of the knowledge and because of everything you can bring to somebody, this is the biggest decision somebody's making ever. Exactly. This is we're not, we're not buying a car. We're buying a house. Right. You know? So it could be a forever home, mm -hmm. an investment property, something you're there for five or six years. Who knows? Whatever the case is, a big decision, a lot of money. So listen, when I walk through houses too, I interact. I, I, I envision them to see things like in the living room, you're, you're, you can put a sectional here, end table, end table, ottoman, you know, the TV can go on this wall. You know, we, we, we kind of envision things into the house so they can kind of, because sometimes you go into a house, it's not staged or, or it's empty or it's a rehab and they just see open space. When you start putting things in place in their mind, they can kind of visualize those things. And I, and, and, and not being a visual person in regards to a lot of things, me, that it helps me tremendously when somebody can do that. You just said something a second ago, which I, I really want to touch on. One of the things that I've talked about with Anthony and, and, and I've, said it literally at an event we were hosting was that Anthony is a tireless worker. You don't do seven listings or, or open houses and know all the data off the top of your head without a ton of prep and a ton of hustle and a ton of work. And, and 
I literally had said that it's like I'm watching Anthony put up posts at 11 o'clock at night talking mm-hmm. about this listing, that listing, two buyers. But, and it was like for myself, it's like that's when I knew it was time for me to go to bed because it was like, oh, it's late. If he's up doing this, I know it's time for me to go to bed and not scroll. But what you, I want you, to you, ask- you know, it's crazy, though, and no. not to cut you off. We know it's no, crazy. No, it. There's actually people. There was one person who actually messaged me and said, you know, you, you're lying. You're not, you're, you're not selling all these all. So what I did was I found them, their email address, and I sent them every single offer that it was, that was sent out for that day. Just to, just to prove it to them, because that's not something I'm going to do is post something that's not true. Well, there's yeah. two questions on that, which is number one, the way that you post. But I'd rather get to the family part first. You got to have a really supportive family if you're doing this. And I want to know, how do you navigate that? I'm probably more interested in, in regards to how your kids and wife navigate it, but I'm talking to you. So I, I'll, I'll direct the question to you. How the hell do you make that work? You know what? Mm-hmm. Without my wife yeah. understanding, mm-hmm. I, I, there's no way I'll be able to do this. You know, she's a full-time um, special ed teacher for over 20 years in the Philadelphia school district. And then she, um, she went to Salisbury, which she loves it there. Okay. So she's been there for the last two years. Mm-hmm. And I mean, look, it's hard. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I've missed in the last three and a half years, I've missed a lot of family time. I've missed a lot of down the short time. I've missed a lot of things that I wish I should have went to. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to make it work now. Mm-hmm. But it seems to get more challenging because now we're starting a team yep. and we're in our office and we have other agents that want to come on board. We're trying to implement a lot of, a lot of different things. And you know, I need to really, and, and I think I've been a little bit better, not a lot, a little bit better by, by going to some dinners or just spending a little bit of time. Yesterday, I took off yesterday. I didn't go to work yesterday, believe it or not. I mean, I did an offer in the morning, mm-hmm. but I was with my 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 wife and my two my two daughters, well, two out of the four, um, for most of the day. And I felt good about it. And uh, we got some stuff done out back. You know, we went to a couple stores. My wife spent a lot more money at the, the home home goods store. She loves to do that. Good. <laughs> You're buying clothes. The fact of the matter is, let her buy the home stuff. I love how many I how many clothes. wicker things can you buy? How many how many wicker chairs can you buy? I ain't a wicker. I ain't a wicker dude. Uh, I like I said again, I'm more contemporary. But the fact is, I like them both. I like clothes and I like the home stuff. Okay. But as I said, it's like if you saw the number of foo foo outdoor pillows, that the over under for me would be thirty. Um, and if anybody questions, it's like. Oh, check out John's foo-foo pillow collection. Uh, <laughs> but I love the fact that you're trying, you know? And, and and the fact of the matter is, obviously, you have to have an understanding before. You've got to, right? You can't just spring that on somebody. And then it's like, well, where the hell is he? You know, uh, kids. And, and and did I see correctly? Grandkid? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you're saying, oh, yeah, absolutely. And and to me, you look like you're just coming out of high school yourself. And I'm like, no, well, listen, my my oldest daughter, she's going to be 27 in September. And um, she's a nurse at Jefferson Hospital. She does Damn. great. That's she's awesome. Gonna be, I mean, she'll be getting married soon. Mm-hmm. And uh, she has, yeah, she has a, my beautiful granddaughter. So it, oh. it adds to the female pact of my whole family because I have all girls. Yeah, see, so you got no shot. Um, yeah, you got, totally. No wonder you're working 20 hours a day, but that's fine. I love, but again, it comes down to the understanding. It comes to the way that you communicate. I believe, I believe it not be in there because people don't have to accept that, but that they're choosing to, and you do, you know what I mean? It's beautiful, you know? It's, it's listen. And I, I thank my stars every day. I have, I have, I have a lot of support. Right. And my, my wife is my biggest cheerleader. Mm-hmm. That's um, great. Great. My, 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 my mother. Mm-hmm. My kids understand my brother, mm-hmm. my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law, God rest her soul, yep. um, who my mother-in-law was just, you know, she always wanted me to be in Bucks County and, and working in Bucks County. And this is, mm-hmm. this is where I'm at. So That's this awesome. is something she's looking down and it's very excited for. And I, you know, I, I, you know, I, I pray to them all the time. That's another thing mm-hmm. I do a lot. I pray uh, a lot. And, um, you know, I feel that it helps me get through a lot of things because, you know, there's always going to be curveballs thrown at you and you got to be, be able to get around them. You the religious? Are you a religious person? Are you a spiritual person? How I am. I'm both. I'm actually. Right. I'm both. I, I love. Uh, you know. I, I. I pray. I think praying is very good and it helps mm-hmm. me get through the days. And uh, I. I don't. We used to go to church every Sunday, and I. I we haven't. You know, ever since COVID happened, it really kind of everybody's got out, out of the groove of things. But yeah, well, a I, number of things. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's one of them. You know. But I, I believe in that, and I and I believe that it helps me get through a lot of things. Especially, look, not everything is all happy, 
go lucky all the time, you know, no. there's always challenges that, that hit us a lot and yeah. we got to get through the challenges, you know, so that's the thing. Support systems major. And also now being on the new, uh, the new squad at Doylestown, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to start getting into coaching, mm-hmm. having a, a life coach. So I love every bit of that. Let's get to that because this is brand new news, literally announced. Well, by the time this airs, no more than a couple of weeks. So after 20 years, we've got the new announcement that the DeChico team, Anthony DeChico, Emilio DeChico, and Amanda Acaro. Am I, am I pronouncing her name Aquaro. properly? Acaro. Acaro. Thank yeah. you. Uh, are now part of the KW family at KW Doylestown and New Hope. So yes. what prompted you to build the team, to get the team, to establish yeah. the team? And again, it goes back to it was a hard decision mm-hmm. on all angles. Uh, I never thought that I would be in this position because I my home, I don't like change. I'm not a change guy. I don't like to, when I'm comfortable. I don't like to move where I'm at. I was happy where I was at. And, um, you know, it, it just – there were some internal situations that, you know, didn't work out. Okay. Fortunately, and, and I had to, you know, we had to part ways. Um, okay. But I think, it, you know, after interviewing a few brokerages, you start mm-hmm. to see that there's opportunity out there. And not that I wasn't given opportunity where I was. Um, I, I learned a lot from Joe, believe me. And I, I learned a lot from his father, who was a great man. Michael Lasista, who was a great man. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of people there that are just very, very great people that I learned a lot from. And uh, it helped me in my real estate career mm-hmm. in a short time of full, being full time. Mm-hmm. So it's it was a hard decision. And f- I think after speaking to Eric Green over at Doylestown, right, and, and John, um, it was it was it was. And I spoke to look a lot of people were a part of this. Mike McCann was a part of this. Mm-hmm. I spoke to Mike. I knew Mike a long time when I was building houses down in um, Northern Liberties. 10 years ago, right. I called Mike to look at a property. He went down there and called me. He's like, listen, you got to buy this property. He's a good you dude. Know? I used Joe, uh, Jim Onesti to uh, co-list with me and Rich Frable to co-list with me. So mm-hmm. I know I, they're very just, they're just good people. And Mike took time out of his day, mm-hmm. a few days actually, mm-hmm. to, to speak with me for a couple. You can't talk to Mike for no 10 minutes. <laughs> Talking to Mike McCann, you, gotta put, you better put two hours aside to talk Easy. to Mike. Easy. Mike, Easy. He's got now. He's got knowledge for days. Yep. Okay. So Mike, Mike helped me. Uh, Vicky Carey, who is the broker. Oh, of- absolutely. In Philadelphia. Vicky, she's a, another, another amazing woman. I mean, mm-hmm. that woman to me is just fantastic. Um, I talked to her, mm-hmm. you know, um, Eric Green, like I said, these guys, they all put together a, a proposal that was just a very good uh, system. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to leave out either because I, I did interview a couple of different KWs. I don't want to leave out Kim Rock. Kim Rock was, you know, I spoke to her about a couple of things and, you know, she's an amazing uh, agent. Yeah. She has a great team over at Langhorn, you know, so at the end of the day, once they put it on paper, it looked mm-hmm. good. And um, you know what, it's, what do we have to lose here? Right. So you're going to build a team and you're talking about coaching and you're talking about going into life coaching. What would be the attributes of, of people that you seek? Well, look, I, I what do you look I, for? I want to build a team, not just to have numbers on the team. Right. I want to build a team that's going to, where, where whoever's on our team is going to learn a lot and is going to prosper in their business. We want agents that are going to want to just brand themselves, be out there. We want to help them get to a point where they're they're comfortable selling a lot of real estate. Mm-hmm. We want we want we want an agent that's going to just be okay to learn mm-hmm. and and be mentored and be and and then give them the structure to become a mega agent. That's the, that's the goal. That's my goal. Anyway, I don't know if it's realistic, but that's what I'm looking to do. You know, what so that's people try to you look for. What do you tend to gravitate toward? In regard listen, you gotta, to you gotta be, listen, my thing is you gotta be a go-getter and you gotta know that you gotta have it. Like there's some people that either you have or you don't, that's why I look at it. You gotta be a go-getter, uh, no excuse type of nonsense. I don't want to hear any excuses. I don't want any drama. Okay. I oh, can be, okay. Yeah. listen, I can be drama myself. Don't get me wrong. I'm, right. I, I, you know, but look, you just want, I want someone who's an all around good agent that's willing to learn and to, to prosper in their business. I don't want to just have someone hang their license there and, you know, uh, they don't do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I want someone who that's, that, that has, that loves the business like I do. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. I'm not just going to stick anybody on the team. I'm going to we'll do the interviews. We'll see where their heart's at. We'll see where their head's at. We'll see where, you know, if it doesn't matter if you're not a big producer now, the goal is to get you to become a big producer, mm-hmm. but also give you the structure to get you there, not just, 
take your money or take splits or whatever the case may be. The, the goal is to make them, to give them, you know, marketing, branding, lead generation, things that are going to help them prosper in their business. That's what my envision is. I love it. So when you're life coaching or you, you're in your mind, like I'm going to establish that as well too, what are some of the traits, like what are some of the things that you would like to do to help other people? Listen, men mentally, you got to be, you know, there. And, and I feel that a lot of people sometimes like I have, a, I have, I have some, some issues. Like I have anxiety, I have bad anxiety. And when anxiety hits me, mm -hmm. it shuts, I, I, I don't even want to leave the house. It, it just, mm -hmm. whatever I'm worried about, whatever's going on in my life. You know, I had a little scare last summer where I was in a hospital, like things yeah. are just, yeah. you know, it'll, it'll, they'll shut you down where you don't want to do anything. And it's just, mm -hmm. that's, so I want to let people know that it's okay. And, and that, you know, everybody's going to have some type of anxiety at some point in their lives and, and, and you can work through it, you know, and it's, you hear a lot of people tell you, oh, you just need to calm down or you work too much. You got to stop. It's, it's easier said than done. It's not, it's not what it is. You know, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of, it's, it's all in your head and it's a lot of, um, you know, it's like a ment mentally it's, it's tough. You know, I also have, mu I have muscular dystrophy. I do have a muscle disease. Okay. okay. I, it, it was, it was from my father. My father passed away from it. At, okay. at 68. I'm affected by it. You know, it's, I don't talk about it much, but I think yeah. people can, you know, I have some physical issues in my, in my shoulders or in my left arm. I don't have any muscle mass there. My right foot sometimes has a, like a drop, like a foot drop. Okay. So for people that have any type of uh, what I have or anything that, mm -hmm. that's going on in their life that I want to let people know that you can still make it, you can still do it. I, you know, so I didn't know either uh, of those. So thanks for sharing both of those things. I knew neither one, but what I would go back to the, the anxiety part, were you always comfortable speaking of it? I wasn't for me. I wasn't, and I have it. And so I'm always grateful when someone else shares and the truth is especially when i think they're really cool and successful and and they look like that you know what i mean that their armor you know what i mean and, and it's like no and so it's just someone's no bulletproof ah, no thank you that's what i was trying to say um when did you get comfortable to speak of it so i would say about 20 let's say 12, 23 years ago i started right. having I didn't know what it was. I thought I was having a heart attack because my, mm -hmm. my chest was tight. My heart, yeah, pounded, yeah, yeah. My heart. Mm -hmm. you know, so you run into the ER. So, you know, there was times I would, I would get, because I, when I moved into my apartment in 2001, I was there by myself. I would get it this, this serious panic attacks. I would actually sleep outside of the hospital because I didn't want to go in. Cause I knew the process. You have to go in, you're waiting there. Da, da, da. So it's just gross. going, just going to the hospital and sleeping outside actually calmed me down. I'd wake up the next morning, go home and everything was fine. And everything's fine. <laughs> You know, so then there was a time where they actually, well, I was in the hospital for six or seven days mm -hmm. and um, I never forget. My mom picked me up right back to her house. She goes, all right, I'm going to go get you Wendy's. I'll be right back. Well, I had another panic attack uh, while she was gone. I, I went right back to the hospital. Oh my God. You know, so again, these, I don't know what it was caused from or what was going on, but I had to see somebody at that time. I had to, I had to go. Once I started talking to somebody, and, and, and kind of just telling my, what's like my whole from start yeah. to finish, I was cured. I was actually cured. I didn't go on any medication, mm -hmm. maybe a Xanax or two, you know, a little half here and there, right. But been crazy. And I was kind of fine. And then mm -hmm. as time went on, maybe 10, 15 years later, a little bit here, but my wife would, would be the one I, she would calm me down, just relax, calm down. We'd put a TV show on and everything would be okay. Right. But recently in the last three years or two years, you know, I started getting it really bad again. And it was, it was tough. And, I, and I'm the type of person where I want to work through it. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a lab rat. I don't want to be put on medic medication. No. I don't want to be, not that there's anything wrong with it. I'm not saying there mm -hmm. is. Sometimes you do have to go on medication, but I want to get to the root of the cause. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm stubborn because I don't listen to my doc. Oh, I'll, hold on. I don't listen to my wife. Yeah. My, okay. And back to the I say, agreement. I say my doctors, before, but realistically, right? I don't listen to my, everything my wife says is true. So I don't, I don't listen to her. If I would listen to her, I'd probably have a lot less anxiety. Everything would be fine. That's fine. But yeah. listen, you, you, you've come from a working background, so you're just going to work through it, like I said, because that's what you did at five, six, seven years old or whatever. So yep. you just work through. I think one of the coolest things is, I think where you really help people is not to dwell. I'm not a believer in that, but acknowledging is different than dwelling on it. And to me, that's the part that I think is so powerful because like I said, I held a lot of things inside a lot 
because I really believed not that I was the only one. I wasn't that naive. I mean, uh, of things for myself, it's like, Christ, I, I didn't even come out of the closet until I was 42. But mm. it was more, I was so worried about what people would, I thought, do. Correct. If I said, then you would X, beat me up, run away, whatever the case may be. So I think what's so powerful in what you just said physically, and, and I knew me, and now I do, great. And, and I love you to death and I don't know any of that stuff. And the fact is um, that it's like you helped me just a second. It's like, okay, I don't want it for you, but it's like you said, nobody has zero. Nobody sure. has zero. So it's like, okay, that's you. You know, um, I go through serious anxiety. I work, I've worked with a professional for 25 years, 30 years, I guess. Um, inconsistent. Yeah. They probably would like a bit more consistency, but that's just me being lazy and sporadic. Well, that's, well, that's the problem. That's the thing. I started going back to it too, and my schedules would just conflict with it, and I couldn't and I mm -hmm. couldn't make it. It just was tough for me, yeah. you know. So it, it's I think it's a good thing to do for anybody who feels any type of anxiety. I think it gets oh, you to go. Relief. It's a release to to uh, to somebody. I've been able to. And this is going to sound so self-serving. It ain't. It's just a matter. I could be free, true, all that stuff in regards to being authentic, the stuff that I coach and teach and all that thing really comes down to that I have a much stronger degree of comfort. I don't have any more sense. It ain't arrogant. It, it's simply a sense of, like, I'm not that important. I know I'm not that important. And so whatever I'm dealing with or going through, and, and, and I'm a hell of a lot more transparent than I've ever been. And Anthony, when I met you literally 10 days ago-ish, um, I could feel a connection within 10 seconds. And I feel like one of the cool things that you deliver in terms of whether it's perfect, it, it is a legit sense of authenticity. Um, I would hope you do become a life coach. I would hope you do. Because like I said, I think there's people that like need to hear from people that that's especially when it's like this guy is dressed like a million bucks and looks this way, you know. Right. They 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 feel and that's the thing. I think sometimes people feel that I'm arrogant or this or that, but I'm realistically, mm -hmm. I'm like everybody else. We breathe the same air. You know, right. I just mm -hmm. I just I just like the work. You know, I just <laughs> my, my, you know, I just love the work. So you know, at the end of the day, that's, I express it through social media. I express, look, I get it. They're annoying. The posts are annoying to some people that, you know, every, every house I post, but I look at it as it's free marketing mm -hmm. and it's consistency. Do you know how much business I get just from posting where someone's friend or aunt or uncle, whoever's looking for a house or looking to sell a house, but guess whose name pop up? Me. So people don't like Zillow. You do. You close a ton of business. I close oh, seven. Social ten. media. Oh, uh, no, I don't. Uh, you do. My only question to you, when we talked about it before the show, which is why don't I see you in it? Uh, I guess, again, you're the number one reason I would want to see your post. The houses are great. The listings are great. Your computer is fun. Your musical taste is freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing missing is Anthony DeChico. That's going to change. <laughs> My That's favorite gonna change. part of all of it, you yeah. know? Um, that's going to change. We're going to, I'm going to definitely get right. more in front of the camera. I mean, I have to, it's right. it sense to, you can't just hide behind the camera because you feel like you're, you, know, you look bad, but who cares at this point, at this point, we're here to do business. We're here to see a personality. We're here to do whatever it takes, you know, to, uh, to, to get to the next house. You know, it's, I'm definitely going to do it. You're saying, cause you look bad. <laughs> You know, sometimes. There's nothing about you that that would ever be the case. There's nothing about you. And I don't mean to sound fawning, but for God's sake, that wouldn't be it. Um, I just, you know, so you get, you get camera shy. That's the thing. You get yeah, camera shy. You know that I get. Okay. You know, okay. even, even at the award ceremony, you know, you start to think, like, if I win this award, what am I going to say when I go up to it? You start to get like that, right. like that, that, that nervousness. And I'm like, all right, I didn't win that award. Okay. I'm good. I'm good till next. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, like, <laughs> got to get over that especially if you don't want to be camera when you're camera shy you you right. tend not to you look like you're camera shy when you're talking mm -hmm. i want to get out of that realm i think i'm getting there uh, i think so too. i think ways that that come ways that have helped me are when people know more i don't have to worry so much so right. i drop my guard a whole lot more 
now. And, and, and is it comfortable for me? Not always. Like you talk about that event, right? So I apparently my streak is still alive. So I have spoken now in front of audiences and presented for ads, this and that for 30 some odd years. And the streak is 30 minutes before the presentation. I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely terrified. And so I was trying to find that night. I was trying to find a quiet room where the folks were in a place called the Buck Hotel. I hadn't been to it in years. Yeah. And I remember thinking it's one of these older type hotel ish things. So a bunch of doors. I'm like, one of them has to be an empty room. So I could just go drop my guard, freak out, whatever I was going to do. And there's people in all of them, all of them. I know. And I was like, just losing it and and then eventually i saw a few friendly faces and and that helped me and then it it, it just goes you know what i mean yep. and then it just goes and i feel exceedingly comfortable but i know that's that's a human thing right and so oh, as yeah. the more human i am like you you know what i mean I, I i think you're so approachable it ain't telling you what to do you know that you know yeah for sure Definitely. i'm excited for you what do you in your mind what would you like to accomplish in regards to with the team building, how do you see it? Like in your mind, if everything goes according to plan, right? I would like to build uh, a mega team. Okay. I would like to have, you know, just a presence out there mm -hmm. that uh, this team is just, you know, doing good business mm -hmm. and uh, we're getting great listings. We have good agents on the team. We're, we're, we're learning, you know, I can learn a lot more stuff myself. Mm -hmm. We're teaching and we're building someone's business to be the max. That's my envision. And, and I, um, you know, I, I thank Joe for allowing me to be on his team for the last three and a half years, because oh. I did learn a lot from Joe. Uh, he's an amazing agent and he sells a lot of real estate and they you know he's, he's very good at what he does. And I, and Mike McCann, he's also just someone that I look up to because he has that team. He has that. And, and he's, when you talk to Mike, he, it's like, you, you want to go out and sell a hundred houses. Like he gives you that motivation. And that's the thing. And motivation is key for everybody. Yep. So that's the goal. I mean, that would be the goal. I think my brother would agree with that as well. That's beautiful. Um, you talked about your brother, you talked about your for your kids. What is it you'd like to see for your kids? Like in regards to that, like, I mean, look, I want, I want them to have their own, like whatever they want to do. I'm all for, you know, mm -hmm. I, I just, I want them to have their own kind of agenda. However, if they ever wanted to get into this, to the real estate business, mm -hmm. I would be more than happy to put them through the training courses and get them to be the best that they can be as well. Gotcha. That's cool. So, but I want them to have their own out, uh, outlook of life and outlook of business mm -hmm. or jobs, whatever they would like to do. Last question for the moment, who inspires you? Well, my wife, for one, um, she's, uh, she is my, my, she's the heart of the, I mean, she's, my wife's been through a lot, honestly, the last five years have been tough. She lost her entire family, her mother, her father, aunt, uncles, grandmother, and she still works every day, hundred percent full-time position. She takes care of my kids, our kids. She takes care of the house and she don't, she don't complain about it. She just, mm -hmm. she does it like it's like, it's nothing. So she inspires me, my mom, you know, she, uh, she, she, you know, we lost our, she lost, we lost our, our, my father back at 16. She still is by herself, but she's here every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. She watches, she's, a, she's, you, you call her, she's here. Oh. She's always here to help and do things, you know, um, and my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, they, they were, my father-in-law was my partner in, in a lot of the real estate transactions. We were doing a lot of building and stuff. And he would always, he would always be together. Like I was with my father when we were in the car business, I would just look over. My dad was you know, right next to me. Mm. And then now he just passed uh, April 4th. I think he just passed. And then um, my mother-in-law died in 2019. So there's, I have a lot of, a lot of inspiration from, from a lot of people in my life mm. that definitely helped me get to where I need to be. Well, I'm excited for you in regards to the fact that you, that even though you've been through a ton in regards to change, adversity, and and some things that you just wouldn't want or need to be, I love the fact that you're still looking to to explode. You're still looking to accelerate oh, yeah. and bring people along for the ride. So, Anthony, I know where to find you in regards to social media and the website. Where are the best places to find you? Well. If it was 
years ago, I would be, I would be in Old City. Yep. <laughs> Years ago, I've been also. I just was there last week, man. Uh, I liked it way better than I remember. I I feel like it's it, it it it's rebounding. That's great. There was nothing like Old City on a Thursday night. You know, you hit oh. uh, you hit thirty two degrees, and then there was glam, and then there was mm-hmm. uh, blue martini, and then uh, what was the place on on Delaware Avenue uh, outside deck? What the heck the name was that place? Uh, Rock Lobster. Thank you. And I blanked. I got you. That's a very complete uh philadelphia evening by the way that's that was great man amazing. but no to now it's you know we we work so we're i'm mostly home a lot or i'm working so, so if you want to find me you can find me either at my house or we'll be on the short brigand team okay so what if they wanted to find you like do we go to your website do we go to your social media page rather than literally knock yep. on your door Listen, um, website for sure www.tachicosells.com no. It's it's a great site. It was uh, it was built for the consumer to to get knowledge, and um, we're all there. We're ready to go, folks. We'll make this easy for you. We'll have the link when you are watching and listening. You won't have to look hard. That will be there as well too. Anthony DeChico, thank you, man. I think you're just uh, such damn good people. And I'm I really, really appreciate it. I hope to see you soon, and uh, I'm always there. Hopefully, we can get some dinner soon. Well, now I know it's it, it's not Old City anymore. It's your house of Brigantine. Um, <laughs> Who's that? It's John Thuffin. No, 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 no. Keep the door closed. Um, anyway. Thank well, the you. good thing is my brother lives next door to me, so we're all here. See that? And I'm nuts about uh, – we – and I just talked to him yesterday. So, Emilio, Anthony, like I said, I, I am such a fucking fan of the Chico brothers. Anthony, now I'm an even bigger fan of you. All right. Thank you so much for doing all of this. Thanks for – folks, you've just heard another episode of Your Message Received. We are thrilled you keep liking, sharing, finding us – on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all those places, and on YouTube. Keep liking, keep coming back for more. Anthony DeChico, thanks one more time for joining us, man. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And folks, we appreciate you. Have a great rest of the day. John Duffin here from Duffin Media. Be well, and we will talk to you soon. See you. Bye. Now, making its way across the finish line, your message received has been a production of Duffin Media.